Improve fuel mileage with Chevron Techron Fuel System Cleaner at O'Reilly Auto Parts. A clean fuel system can increase your vehicle's performance and gas mileage. Get Chevron Techron Fuel System Cleaner starting at $9.99 and earn 10 times O rewards points on your purchase. Get the most out of every gallon. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts or shop O'ReillyAuto.com today. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. <laughs> The following is an America Matters Media production. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the station or its advertisers, although we think they should. But that's the opinion of America Matters Media. This is Michelle Perry Roberts with CR Integrated Medical Center. On my show today, I have Christy Nanos. She lives back east. Christy, are you on the phone there? Uh, yeah, I'm here. On the web. <laughs> so we've never met in person, but I've heard a lot of nice things about you, and we always talk through email. Yeah. So you. I would love for you to tell me about you and your background. Sure. About my Lyme background? Yeah. Specifically, yeah. Um, I was bit by a tick as a child, but didn't really have many symptoms growing up. And it wasn't until I went to Guatemala when I was 19 years old that I came back and got extremely sick. And it turns out it just triggered Lyme disease. Um, was sick for about 10 years with, uh, you know, being misdiagnosed, saw over 20 specialists. And then I found Dr. Fong um, at Sierra Integrated Medical Center. Um, and got diagnosed with Lyme disease and have been in, in and out of treatments for the past three years, uh, pretty much in remission now, been dealing a lot with uh, parasites and other things too that go hand in hand with Lyme disease. But uh, I've had to learn a lot and I wrote a book all about it because we've become the experts on our journey. Oh, you definitely do. What is the name of your book? It's called TikTok. It's Lyme O'Clock. A Warrior's Guide to Reclaiming Health and Happiness. So have you reclaimed your health and happiness? I have. I have. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. So yeah. what did you do before? Did you have a career? Yeah. So I lived in Los Angeles uh, for the past 10 years and was acting and writing out there. Uh, I've moved back to the East Coast now. Lyme disease really changed my life. It also uh, changed my perspective on life and kind of helped me figure out what really mattered. I love acting. Um, the film world is incredible. I wasn't as drawn to it anymore as I went through treatments. I really felt this deep need to give back. And that's why I wrote the book, to help other people. I've also become a health and a life coach now, and I help people with Lyme disease, you know, get back on their feet too. Uh, and still kind of figuring out where exactly I want my life to go because it's changed a lot over the last, yeah, couple of years. Oh, I bet. So mm -hmm. how do people find you? Do you find them in Lyme support groups or how, how did you become a health people coach? People mainly, uh, they find me on social media. I started posting about Lyme disease on TikTok specifically after get, getting diagnosed and I had a few TikToks go viral <laughs> uh, and people just found me and they started messaging me on Instagram mainly from around the world, just asking me questions about how I stay so happy, how I'm positive, what treatments I'm doing, you know, what's working, what's not. So yeah, I love connecting with people. So your tr when did your symptoms really start? Was it 10 years ago? I mean, looking back, I did have some symptoms as a child that I can be like, that was Lyme disease. That wasn't just regular joint pain, uh, crippling joint pain. Um, but my main symptoms started at 19 after I went to Guatemala. So that was 13 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, did you, what kind of symptoms did show up to every day? Just uh, joint pain? I started getting, you know, I started getting nauseous. All of a sudden, I couldn't eat foods anymore. Everything was making me sick. I had crazy insomnia. You know, symptoms for me over that 10 year span of being misdiagnosed, they, they changed and they would come and go every couple years. So it was so hard to explain to doctors that I was sick and what I was going through. Cause I'm like, you know, I used to have all this stuff. I would have heart palpitations and I went and saw a cardiologist and they're like, you're fine. 
Um, I, you know, had overactive bladder issues. I went to see a urologist. They said, you're fine. All these GI issues, every GI doctor I saw could not figure it out. And it just is the, you know, the craziness that Lyme disease can do to the body, but it's never just Lyme too, is what I've really learned. The co-infection. Yes. There's a lot of co-infections. I found that with so many different, the patients that come in, it's either heavy metals, parasites. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. on and So what did the disease do to your mind and body? What didn't it do? (laughs) No. Um, Let's see. Uh, Physically, in terms of, you know, symptoms, it definitely took a toll on energy for a long time. And with, you know, being in and out of treatments, the fatigue is is tough the pain is hard mentally um definitely had bouts of anxiety depression just feeling unworthy and what i've really learned is it wasn't me it was it was the bacteria it was the bugs it was the viruses dying off or flaring up so it never was really um me but also lime uh you know has given me such a new perspective on life in the world, though. Uh, I, I will never bless Lyme disease. <laughs> I don't think anyone ever wants to have this, but I've learned a lot and I've become, you know, I think a better person from dealing with an invisible illness that people can't see. You become way more grateful uh, just for your life and for your health. Uh, you become way less judgmental of other people because you never know what someone is going through. And I really started sharing that when I was an actor in LA, just being chronically ill with no diagnosis, that you can't judge a book by its cover. You can look at me and I look completely healthy. I was going on all these auditions and, you know, working my butt off and people would say, what do you mean you're sick? I said, yeah, you can't, you have have no idea what someone is going through. So yes. And there's so many autoimmune, autoimmune diseases that definitely people look at you or you're fine, but you're going through a lot of pain and suffering and yeah. they don't even know because we always put on a happy face yeah, but there's exactly. always yeah there's always hope amazing life can be had if you learn so much about yourself and what you can do to inspire people is yeah. what i've learned from my journey yep always hope you gotta cling to hope there are always better days those 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 dark days they never last they feel like they're gonna last but they don't last um and i think if we can learn you know, something from this experience and then give back. That's just so beautiful, you know, to help other people, to show other people that this mountain can be moved. Yes. And we're going to, we take a break here for about five minutes or for three minutes and then we'll get back with you. Sounds good. Sliced fresh sandwiches every day Made right before your eyes The port of Subway Could be a spoken number five Or a classic number eight Or maybe an Italian is your number one fave Whatever you crave Prepare to fall in love Sliced fresh sandwiches Port of Subs Port of Subs Meatball Marinara Bundle is mmm good. Tender, juicy meatballs on savory, fresh-baked rosemary Swiss bread covered with zesty marinara and provolone cheese, then grilled to perfection. Your Meatball Marinara Bundle comes with cheddar sun chips, an ice-cold Dr. Pepper, and a baked fresh daily classic chocolate chip cookie. Fall in love with the Meatball Marinara Bundle. It's a meal that even your nono will love. Visit your neighborhood Port of Subs today or order online at portofsubs.com or on our app. Port of Subs, slicing fresh for 50 years. Every yummy number between the nose. Sandwiches, Businesses, writers, check this out. Go to LRPMV.com to get your printing, publishing, and professional services today. Need a virtual office? A place to receive and forward your mail with professional address and suite number for your business? Someone to answer your telephones? Want to rent a conference room for only $15 an hour? What about that book you've been wanting to have printed? LRP Printing and Business Center can do it for you. And they have a professional assistant on-site daily, Monday through Friday. Just call 775-356-1004. Need copies, business cards, invoices, 
books, booklets, or graphic design to help brand you or your business, just call 775-356-1004 or go to lrpnv.com. With a great selection of new and used books, you can get your printing done and a book to entertain you in your time off. And don't forget, you could have your business sponsoring the Bookhound Radio Show, just like Andrew Martoni, author of Little Men in the Map, does every week. Just go to lrpnv.com. That's lrpnv.com or call 775-356-1004. They'll provide solutions for your business and writing projects. At a proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, we've been accomplishing happy feet for over 30 years. We offer a various range of shoe styles and sizes for both men and women. From all season shoes and orthotics to work boots and safety shoes, our professional and reliable staff possesses the knowledge to help you find the proper shoes to fit your needs. Hard to fit? Hard to find? A proper fit footwear is here to give our customers happy feet. We make people aware of potential foot problems as we're sizing their feet, suggesting the right arch support, and gutting them to the proper shoes for their needs. Stop by a proper fit footwear at 4001 South Virginia Street in the Reno Town Mall today and allow the owner, Mike Jones, and our fabulous staff to find the perfect pair of shoes tailored to your specific needs. A proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, the home of happy feet, where comfort and your feet meet. Hi, this is Michelle Perry Roberts from Sierra Integrative Medical Center. On my show today, I have Krista Nanos. Uh, she's living back east. Where are you back east? Outside Philadelphia. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So, you know, one thing I've learned, there's early stages of Lyme disease and there's late mm-hmm. stages of Lyme disease. So yeah. what stage were you at when you started to get treated? Late. Late. Late, 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 late. <laughs> Yeah, uh, sadly did not catch it at the acute stage as a child. Um, and Dr. Fong, I did all the blood testing, it came back extremely positive, even, you know, CDC positive. And Dr. Fong was like, whoa, haven't seen so many bands present in someone in a long time. Oh, wow. How long were you out for treatment? Uh, I was at uh, Sierra for about six weeks. Just, and, you- and, and, yeah, since then I've seen some other doctors as well. Uh, had some issues with COVID and relapsing. Um, and then also found out that, yeah, I had a significant parasite infection from that trip to Guatemala 13 years ago. Oh, so wow. I've been to parasite yeah. specialists. Since. You haven't been back. <laughs> I haven't been back to Sierra, no. Or to Guatemala. You know? <laughs> yeah, I went to Guatemala. <laughs> <laughs> no, haven't been back to Guatemala. Loved it there, but uh, beware of swimming in lakes. <laughs> oh, I hear that. So yeah. what, did, what did detox mean to you? Ooh, detoxing is so important. Um, detox treatments and just really, you know, aiding our bodies in the removal of these, these bacteria, the bugs, the viruses, everything. <laughs> um, our bodies need help. The liver does detox, but in the world that we live in today with so many toxins, herbicides, pesticides, glyphosate, you know, what's on our food, what we eat, what we breathe, what we put on our skin, our faces, our makeup, all of it's toxic. So our body really needs help detoxing. Um, Detoxing to me, I mean, it could be a few different things. Uh, Detoxing treatments like castor oil packs are great. Um, Enemas, also great. Infrared saunas, also great. Uh, Really depends on your case and what you're you're dealing with but the way we detox is you know sweat pee or poop to get those toxins out Mm -hmm. interesting you know and why is uneducated doctors providers a big problem um they're it's a big problem because (laughs) there's not enough um awareness about lyme and there's not enough people uh backing us and when you have these doctors who really aren't educated on it um they're not able to diagnose because they're not looking for the right symptoms they're not trained in lyme disease especially late stage chronic lyme disease um that it can persist that there's there's so many studies showing that the bacteria does persist especially when not treated and even sometimes when treated it just 
it doesn't always work, you know, the antibiotics, those two weeks. So I think it's a huge issue because I saw over 20 specialists during those 10 years and not a single one even mentioned Lyme disease. I was never tested. Had I been tested, I think it would have came back positive right away. So yeah, I think there needs to be more education around Lyme in the, in the medical system. And also just as patients, as people, uh, a new study came out a couple months ago that says over 14% of the population has Lyme disease. Oh, wow. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Like and I know, world. <laughs> yeah. And I know so many people that come into the center is mm -hmm. they get diagnosed with MS, fibromyalgia, lupus, yeah. Yeah. um, so many other different diseases and they get treated for that, but they still never get better. It's the, you know, Lyme disease is the great imitator. Yep. And they all yep. have Lyme's. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not surprised. You know, and I've heard mold allergies can be worse than Lyme disease. Yeah. It's fascinating. We just actually finished um, some mold rem uh, remediation um, in our house here on the East coast. Uh, I think mold is a huge issue because it suppresses the immune system is the main thing. And so when you're dealing with Lyme disease, it's, it's hard to sometimes heal when you're in a moldy environment and the mold can be invisible. It can be hidden just in the HVAC system. Uh, but the symptoms of mold illness can be very, very similar to Lyme disease. Um, it really depends on, the person I can, st I can be exposed to mold and not have horrific symptoms, but I was living in a house that had some mold and I found myself not being able to fully get better. So the remediation definitely helped. Oh, that's interesting. And I heard mm -hmm. co-infections can be worse than Lyme disease. Yeah. I, I don't ever think Lyme is the um, major culprit. It really depends on the person. Um, you can never kind of speak for someone else and what their journey is, but it's very common to have the co-infections like Babesia, like Bartonella, like Mycoplasma, like Ehrlichia, all of these things, um, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, you know, they're very, they're hard to treat. Um, they can be really, really serious and, and dangerous. Um, and sometimes, yeah, worse symptoms than Lyme disease itself. Well, and I think one of the biggest things, how does Lyme impact a normal brain function? If you were at late stage Lyme, you can really talk to this. You know, it's hard because I really think it affects everyone differently. Like I wish I could just say this is exactly how it's going to happen for everyone because not, not everyone has neurological Lyme. Uh, speaking from myself, I can say that when I was in my mid-20s, um, I did start to feel like I was losing my mind. I did. I had a really hard time with word retrieval. I couldn't think of certain words. Um, I couldn't remember how to spell certain things. I was forgetting my friends' names, um, kind of forgetting that, you know, your list of things to do, uh, just way more forgetful um, is kind of how I would, I would put it. But it wasn't. It was... I was sick and, you know, there was stuff going on in, in the brain. Um, everyone, yeah, everyone has a different, different experience and it kind of, you know, where did the Lyme or the co-infections, where did they kind of live in your body? Some people really have a hard time with neurological Lyme and seizures and other things. Other people, it's really mainly in the joints and it might present like rheumatoid arthritis. For me, a lot of it was like GI, you know, with the parasites too. So it's really different for everyone, but I think um, it's important to, you know, get treated when you can and catch it early as best you can. And it's interesting. The CDC does not recognize Lyme disease. I was really yeah. amazed about that. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It was a big shocker for me, too, that, um, you know, it recognizes it at, it at its uh, acute stage. But the fact is that Lyme can persist through antibiotics um, and we really need some more recognition in the world to help us get more treatments. Yeah. Because I, I've seen antibiotics not work, you know, uh, they everybody. Often don't. They often yeah. don't. And sometimes they need to be hand in hand with something else, but um, oftentimes it's, it, it can cause more damage to the system. It really depends on the body, but 
the truth is that when the CDC won't recognize chronic or late stage Lyme disease, insurance companies aren't paying for any of these medical treatments. Correct. So that's why we really need their help. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm wondering how we can bring more awareness to the community about Lyme's and promote awareness about Lyme disease. Yeah. I mean, I think the more that we all can share our stories, the better. Um, you know, I wrote a book. Not everyone's going to write a book. But, you know, what are your talents? What can you do to spread the word um, and help other people? Because I got diagnosed, you know, or found out that I thought I might have Lyme by friends of a friend, you know, meeting these people and, and discussing symptoms because 10 years of seeing doctors couldn't help me. I met a friend, friend's friend, who was like, it sounds like you might have Lyme disease. And I was like, no, I've never been treated for Lyme or tested for Lyme. That's, I don't know that that could be it. And then it turned out to be Lyme. And here I am now, three years later, a huge advocate advocate in the community, hoping that my story can help other people recognize they might have Lyme disease. Um, and, and then what do you do about it? You know, got to move forward and get better. Yeah. That is interesting. I think the more we share our stories just the better. That's all we can kind of do. Uh, you know, the more we can get the government <laughs> on our side, the, the politicians backing us. Uh, there are a lot of great people doing that. Um, Advocacy Express is um, is a type of, what is it, um, program that um, a woman with Lyme disease kind of set up for you to reach out to your politicians and advocate for Lyme disease, but they'll do it for you. They'll send the letters to your politicians. Um, it's a really cool program, Advocacy Express. So they're doing that kind of side of the world with Lyme and trying to get our stories out. I, I'd like to talk with the other people. That's kind of my thing. Uh, the people who are fighting Lyme, let's all kind of band together and keep sharing our stories. Yeah, and I think that's really important because, you know, I had so many diagnoses, MS, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, Hashimoto's, lupus, Yeah, and it was Lyme's the whole time. Yeah, yeah. It's sadly not a not an uncommon story. I wish, you know, yeah, um, I'm so sorry. So many people are suffering with many misdiagnoses and going down treatments that aren't going to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just to get these people healthier. Yeah. I mean, everyone's trying. Like all these doctors are making their educated guesses as you know best they can on what's going on. But many of them aren't educated about Lyme disease. And that's really where the problem is. They're not educated we might not be educated. So people are just gonna round, go around the circle. We'll be right back. The Delta and Bonanza saloons in Virginia City are simply elegant. Imagine ascending the grand staircase and being surrounded by the Victorian elegance and grandeur of the historic banquet rooms. Original crystal chandeliers, mahogany bars, and oak dance floors highlight the eloquently appointed spaces. A truly romantic and unique setting for your wedding, banquets, or holiday parties. Detailed ceremony and menu planning ensures your special event is a memorable occasion. With just one call to Jesse at 775-847-0789, all of your arrangements will be handled by their experienced staff with your every expectation in mind, including cakes, flowers, photography, videography, music, and party amenities. Complete ceremony and reception packages are available as well as their famous themed weddings. Since 1865, the Delta and Bonanza Saloon's guests have come from every state in the union. Now it's your turn. No event is too large or too small. Let the Delta and Bonanza Saloon plan your next incredible event. Call Jesse at 775-847-0789. Hi, I'm Bill Kendall. I've practiced law in Northern Nevada for over 25 years, and I specialize in representing injured people in their fights for just compensation. I've tried over 20 jury trials to verdict. I've arbitrated or mediated hundreds of personal injury cases on behalf of clients to successful conclusions, and I have personally handled every single case from start to finish. With me as your attorney, you can rest assured that your case will be handled competently and that I will be responsive to all of your needs and questions. 
My goal in every case is to have clients that are satisfied with the outcome of their case and who would recommend me to others. Give me a call at 775-324-6464 or visit my website, BillKendallLaw.com. My number again is 775-324-6464. Hi, I'm Noreen Leary, CEO of the Veterans Guest House. Guest House is a home away from home for our veterans and their families who travel to Reno for medical care. Our house is more than just a warm bed. It's a place of camaraderie where veterans can find support and long-lasting friends. We serve veterans, men and women, young and old, Navy, Army, Marines, Coast Guard, and Air Force. Wherever they hail from and whatever their circumstance, the Veterans Guest House is ready to support them. The reason we feel so strongly about our mission is that we know that many veterans would forgo their medical treatments because they simply can't afford the accommodations. The Guest House is one of a kind in the country funded entirely through private donations. Want to know how you can help? There are many ways you can be involved, from volunteering, providing dinners, or supplying items from our wish list. Find out more about the Guest House at www.veteransguesthouse.org. Serving veterans today, tomorrow, and for years to come. Hi, this is Michelle Perry Roberts with Sierra Integrated Medical Center. On my show, I have Christy, Krista Nanos, and she lives back east, and she wrote TikTok. What was the name of your book again? Tick- TikTok, it's Lime O'Clock. TikTok, it's Lime O'Clock. And it's yeah. all about timing with limes. It really is. So what are, the, <laughs> some, what are some things that you are doing to make a difference in the Lyme community? Oh, I'm trying my best. Um, yeah, wrote this book, which I think is really helping a lot of people, especially when they first start out with um, getting diagnosed. But um, another reason I think my book is helping a lot of people is that there are four sections and the final section, the last section is to those who don't have it. So many Lyme um, patients are giving this book to their caregivers, their partners, their friends, um, and they can say, hey, here's you know, this section of this book that's really two people who don't have Lyme. So you can better understand someone going through treatment so they don't have to really keep explaining it themselves. That, that was something that I didn't find in many other Lyme books. And I really wanted to incorporate that. Um, other than writing this book, um, I've become a health and a life coach. So I do, I coach other people with Lyme disease um, and help them kind of, you know, find their way, get better and keep enjoying their lives. Yeah, and I think that's the most biggest thing because they don't know where to go. I mean, I talk to so many people with Lyme disease, and one of the biggest things that I've been trying to help people is do fundraisers, do, you know, certain things so they can um, figure out how they can come out for treatment because insurance doesn't pay for it. I know. It's, uh, It's a nightmare. It really is. It really is a nightmare. Um, the financial aspect of it. But, you know, I always say there's a lot of things we can do on our own from home too. And I've learned that um, over the last couple of years, you know, going through a lot of different treatments. I've done a lot. I did a lot of treatments um, for different things too. And some work, some didn't, but we can change our lifestyle. We can change our diets, our, you know, sleeping habits, um, you know, detoxing, like I said, you know, getting a castor oil pack, or making sure you're able to sweat, doing an Epsom salt bath, all of that, and taking binders when you do that too, to really bind up the toxins and help them, you know, get out of your system. Um, All of those are pretty much free. Um, You can do it yourself at home. Uh, Sunlight, right? Nature, grounding, standing barefoot on the earth. All of these things are so beneficial. Meditation is huge. Mindfulness is huge. It's so important on this journey. I'm like deep into a meditation journey right now and it's helping me heal so much and it's free, you know? So I think when people really financially can't afford some of the more expensive treatments, I say, you know, start with what you have. What can you do at home? You know, what can you cut out that's toxic? Can you change your diet to be a more healthy whole food diet? Um, You know, start from there. Oh, that's interesting. How can you promote more awareness on Lyme disease? 
promoting more awareness. Um, I really think, you know, uh, I post a lot on social media. Um, not everyone's on social media, I think, but the people that are, I think sharing about it um, is, is a great way to spread awareness. Um, May is Lyme Disease Awareness Month. So a lot of things happen in May, but I think throughout, you know, throughout the, the whole year, I just, I, I continue to share my story, the highs and the lows, what's happening to me and how I'm doing and how I'm, I keep getting better and better. Um, and I think that just helps other people, just those updates. Uh, oh, that's, that's awesome. Cause I yeah. think people need to know that um, yeah. just because so many people don't know that they can get better. They still yeah. don't believe. And I keep telling them, like, I'm a living example. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have yeah, everything in God. remission. <laughs> thank God. It's true. We do need people um, to keep, you know, to sharing their success stories and their stories of hope. Um, you know, it's hard. I will never say that the journey is easy. And unfortunately, what works for someone else might not work for that person. So you really have to have persistence and determination to keep going and to keep trying new things like never give up never ever ever give up um but yeah to have those those people that those success stories it's really important yeah and i think that's the most important thing that's on my license plate never ever give up oh, n-e-g-u yes yeah i love that mm-hmm so I definitely learned so much about, um, you know, to be, a, you know, an example to everyone that comes into the clinic. You can definitely yeah. get better. Yeah. It's so key. Um, it's huge. It's huge. And yeah, I mean, Sierra helped me so much. Dr. Fong helped me so oh. much. I'm so incredibly grateful. Like they were the very beginning of my journey and really helped immensely and you know and then we keep going well and i think one thing is why some people don't believe in chronic lyme is real and they have all the symptoms of right. so many different things right and i think uh i think a lot of people and we've, we've all kind of been um you know grown up this way really putting doctors on a pedestal um, and really completely trusting everything that the medical community says to us. That's, at least that's how I was raised, you know, go to the doctor, they'll fix you. And then you learn sometimes they can't and your world gets shaken up. Um, and then that's when you realize, wait a second, like I need to keep doing my own research. I need to see different doctors. You can't ever just let one person's opinion sway you. But at least for me in the beginning, it really was like, oh, this doctor says I'm fine. <laughs> I don't feel fine. But um, everyone around me was like, well, you must be fine. It's not, it's nothing. It's all on your head. I was told yeah. that a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. What are Lyme survivor, survivors discussing about themselves that you talk to? What are Lyme survivors discussing about themselves? Um, I think it's a lot of what we were just saying, hope, keep, go keep going, don't give up. Um, it's terrible. We can all feel for the people going through the treatments. Um, we've been there. We know those moments of despair, uh, but we've also, you know, gone to hell and come out of it. And yeah, we are those kind of shining examples that like life does continue and it can get better. So just keep going. Um, and I think also we want to keep spreading awareness. We don't want anyone to have to go through what we went through no. with Lyme disease. I think that's why we do share our stories. That's why I wrote my book. You know, if, if my book can help just one person not have to go through, you know, a 10 year journey before getting diagnosed, then I've done my job. You know, and how for, can people find your book? Yeah, it's on Amazon. It's on, it's, a, it's on, you know, you can Google it and find it. It's in some local bookstores as well. But I think the easiest place um, to get it is on Amazon. 
yeah, TikTok, it's Lima Clock. And it was a bestseller for many months when it first came out, which is just super cool. And I'm so grateful for the community. A lot of people have bought it and it's helped a lot of people. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And you know, if people can follow, I need to write a story. I haven't done yeah. that yet. It's yeah. Trying to get in that space. <laughs> How did you finally get to where I go, I got to write about this? Oh, so it really kind of came naturally to me. So being an actor and a writer already in LA, um, I, I had this just this moment where I realized, you know, it's less about me telling someone else's story right now. And it's more about me telling my own story. Uh, that's what needs to happen in the world. And so I started to write a book. At first, I thought it was going to be a memoir. I wanted it to be a memoir, but that's going to be my next book. This book was inspired by all of those comments that I was getting from people on either TikTok or sending me messages to Instagram from all around the world asking me questions about Lyme disease, needing answers, needing help. Um, so I really, that inspired me to like, I'm going to write a book about all of these questions that everyone keeps asking me and then they can just find, you can have the book. And then here's all of my advice, um, you know, from start to end. So it just kind of fell into my lap and it just made sense. And it also was something I could do when I was going through treatments because um, I really couldn't work much. And yeah, I was like, I can write. I can write from home. And then, then I finished the book and then I self-published it. And it was hard. It was a lot of work, but so worth it. So, so worth it. Oh, and it's one of those things that... Um... It puts you, I think once you write the book, you get all that energy out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it felt very cathartic to share my story. Um, and also to give people, you know, tips and, uh, you know, a lot of people just getting diagnosed read it and they said, you know, it helped us really like them and their families prepare for what was to be ahead, prepare for the treatments, find the right doctors and when to pivot when to change doctors, if something's not working, you know, don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to add more to your team or change your team. I've had to do that many times. Oh, I've changed my team so many times. <laughs> right? Like we I'm, do what we have to. Yeah. It's funny though, when you don't see your team anymore, they're like, um, I can't believe we're <laughs> doing so well. I go, yep. I just go for my annual brain scan up oh, no active lesions you're doing something right oh i love that love that yeah so i never had any lesions on my brain that was something it didn't really affect me there i did have some parasites in the brain though i think um but you know it just shows you that lyme can really affect everyone so differently and that's also why it's so hard to treat and why so many doctors are scared scared of it really how did you find out about sierra integrative medical center uh, my college roommate's mother-in-law went to Sierra. So I connected with her after I realized, oh, I think I might have Lyme. And she said, yeah, I went there and it's amazing. So I called and I booked the, a trip right away, a couple weeks out and I went and then, yeah, it just, I thought I was going to be there for like maybe a long weekend, a week. I didn't pack anything. And then my mom flew out. And we ended up staying six weeks. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Well, we're going to take another break here again. Okay. So okay. I think we are. Maybe not. Oh, oh yeah. She's nodding her head. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Patterson. I'm the founder and owner of Nevada Advanced Pain Specialists. Nevada Advanced Pain Specialists, we take a comprehensive approach to treating patients with chronic pain in the greater Reno, Tahoe area. We believe in the biopsychosocial model. This means we use multiple disciplines such as massage therapy, physical therapy, behavioral health, and medical treatments to treat your chronic pain. A plan of care is tailor-made for each individual patient. We always recommend conservative care first, but offer minimally invasive treatments when necessary. We are your one-stop shop. If it hurts, we can help. We pride ourselves in providing passionate care and making you feel welcome and understood. We are located in Reno and in Sparks, so give us a call to schedule a new patient consult at 284-8650. Again, that's 284-8650. Or visit our website at nvadvancepain.com. We hope you choose Nevada Advanced Pain Specialist to be your center for injury rehabilitation. nvadvancepain.com, 284-8650.
At a proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, we've been accomplishing happy feet for over 30 years. We offer a various range of shoe styles and sizes for both men and women. From all-season shoes and orthotics to work boots and safety shoes, our professional and reliable staff possesses the knowledge to help you find the proper shoes to fit your needs. Hard to fit? Hard to find? A proper fit footwear is here to give our customers happy feet. We make people aware of potential foot problems as we're sizing their feet, suggesting the right arch support, and gutting them to the proper shoes for their needs. Stop by a proper fit footwear at 4001 South Virginia Street in the Reno Town Mall today and allow the owner, Mike Jones, and our fabulous staff to find the perfect pair of shoes tailored to your specific needs. A proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, the home of happy feet, where comfort and your feet meet. Charbecue the Butcher's Kitchen would like to thank every customer for your loyalty and continued support through these challenging times. Call for takeout and delivery of rib tips, brisket, ahi tuna, roasted veggies, and much more. Charbecue is open from 11 to 7, Monday through Saturday, and delivers hot food safe and healthy. Call 499-5855 for details. 499-5855, Charbecue, as featured on diners, drive-ins, and dives. Get real. Get into Charbecue Reno. Hi, this is Eddie Floyd. Let me tell you about my favorite non-profit public charity, Wynema Wild Horse Sanctuary, located on the Forsyth Ranch in Hallelujah Junction area. And please go to www.wynemaranch.com. That's W-Y-N-E-M-A ranch.com. Hi, this is Michelle Perry Roberts with CR Integrative Medical Center. On the show today, I have Krista Nanos. Uh, she is a former Lyme patient at CR Integrative Medical Center. And let's talk about what um, Lyme survivors are just, um, what is, what diet do you follow? Oh, what diet do I follow? So for the longest time, I, um, I was gluten-free because it just made me feel better, um, even though I'm not celiac. But I do think gluten can be very inflammatory when someone's dealing with Lyme. But I do think overall, everyone is different when it comes to food. But I still do gluten-free for the most part. Um, mm, dairy sometimes, sometimes not. Last year, I did a lot of dairy stuff. More recently, because I had some of that mold exposure, I've been doing a low histamine diet. I think that can help a lot of people, especially if you're living in mold and dealing with Lyme disease. Um, a lot of great success with that. So that's currently what I'm doing, mainly low histamine. I'm adding some things back in now. Uh, but I've also switched to distilled water. I think people don't talk enough about water when it comes to healing. Um, I have found huge success from switching to distilled water because it just is a bomb when it comes to uh, killing off pathogens. Um, Lyme, parasites, everything feeds off of the herbicides and the pesticides that are in our tap water that really don't get filtered out properly from normal filtration processes. So distillation water, um, distilled water is a big detox for the body. And I actually learned about this as a health coach, that it really is the purest form of water that we should be drinking. But I did have detox reactions for the first couple months when I switched. So it is something to try to switch over slowly. Especially there's no flavor. <laughs> there's no flavor. There's nothing. No, it, it does kind of taste a little funky too. Um, and I have my own distiller. Like I make it at home. I don't buy the plastic jugs anymore. But I do think like if you're drinking tap water, switch immediately. Like you got it. You can't be doing that. Many people find alkaline water can be That's helpful. That's what I drink. Yeah, it depends on the person, I think. But I think, you know, find your water source and make sure it's not tap. Um, because I think, you know, hydrating is so, so important. And then also finding the diet that works for you. Some people like paleo, some like keto. Um, it really depends on the body. But I think like less sugar, less refined sugar, less packaging, more whole foods, fruits, vegetables, meat. Um, it's just, you know, a healthier diet for anyone. 
And I found out leaky gut is really common in Lyme patients. Yeah, it is. It really is. I think a lot of it attributes back to some parasites too. Mm -hmm. That can be, you know, that weren't diagnosed or found because every stool test I did for 10 years was uh, negative. Um, and that's very, very common, especially in the Lyme world. But leaky gut's super, super huge. And I think cutting out gluten, cutting out dairy, cutting out those refined sugars can help with that a lot. Yeah, sugar is the hardest one. That's yeah, one I've been working on. <laughs> yeah, it just causes so much um, inflammation it in the does. body. Yeah. And like becoming your own health advocate, that is like the hugest part. I, like you, had to tell doctors, no, this is not what I want. <laughs> right. I did not like right. that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -mm. But we become our, you know, our best advocates. You yes. Know, the experts of our bodies. All we can do is keep advocating for ourselves. It, and that's what I think we got to keep telling Lyme's patients to do too, is keep asking. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's the hardest part. You really got to seek out a natural path or a homeopathic just to get, get the right testing for Lyme disease because usually LabCorp and Quest my lab tests are inaccurate. Right. Yeah. It. It. The testing is... Super inaccurate. The ELISA, I do not trust the ELISA test. Um, you know, the Western blot's a little bit better, but you know, you really have to find those those companies that like Igenix. I love Igenix, uh, DNA connection. Oh yes. Um, all the yeah, it's just you gotta find a better company to do the testing. Mm -hmm. It it's definitely true. And then can people get their own Lyme test by themselves? Or do they have to have a doctor's order? Um, I think you might be able to order directly from hygienics themselves, but, uh, you need to have someone draw the lab. You need to have someone be able to draw the blood work. Um, oh, okay. but I think you can directly order it themselves. It is just easier to have a doctor do it. And most holistic or functional doctors will be able to order that test for you. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you do that brings you laughter in your life? <gasps> oh, what do I do? So I was a comedian. <laughs> ah, in LA, I did improv and sketch comedy. Um, so I am all about laughing. I am, you know, laughing lime away. I have a whole chapter about laughter. Um, I think it's, you know, kind of different for everyone, but I find the joy in life every single day. I find um, reasons to laugh at myself or at, you know, situations that I'm in. But I also love watching funny movies, like anything to kind of, yeah, find that laughter, force that laughter to begin with. And then just it'll start coming more, more naturally. So finding those funny movies, um, just anything like that. Um, but yeah, I specifically, it's very, laughter comes very easily for me. And it has been such a healing modality for me on this journey. Oh, that's fun. So yeah. do you still do a lot of TikTok videos? <laughs> um, I do. I do. I make a lot of TikTok videos and uh, they're all mainly comedic ones. Um, and that brings me joy, brings a lot of, I think the community brings them joy as well, because we need more laughter. We need more hope. Um, oh, we do. Right. So, so how can Lyme's patients find you on Facebook and on um, yeah. Instagram? Just my name, Krista Nanos. Um, you'll find me uh, at Krista Nanos. Um, I think it's at Krista.nanos on Instagram. Uh, TikTok is just Krista Nanos. Yeah, I'm on Facebook. I'm on all the places. I have uh, a six-minute teaser trailer on YouTube, actually about my time mainly at Sierra, um, going through those medical treatments. So if anyone's more interested in like seeing what that was like and seeing my journey with it, they'll see me that I'm laughing. I, I was known to be like the comedic relief to dancing around when getting those, you know, fevers and everything. Um, so yeah, um, they can find me on all those places. And please, if you have Lyme disease, please reach out. We'd love to connect. Um, if you have questions about, about my book or about coaching or anything, happy to talk with people. Well, and I think it's so important that you help other people because you've gone through the journey and that's why I can talk about it too, because I've been there being yeah. diagnosed with seven chronic diseases and, mm. you know, been able to share my experience at Sierra Integrated Medical Center. That's why I ended up working there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 
incredible. Um, I do think our stories resonate so much with people as they're going through it because we've been through it. Um, you, it, you know, I always say you never will truly understand what it's like to go through Lyme disease treatments or to even have it. You don't get it till you get it. Yeah, that's so I true. I hope you never get it. I hope other people never get it. You know, and I talk a lot about that in my book. Um, but someone will never truly get it until they get it. And all we can do is, you know, have those support systems educate themselves or, you know, want to learn more, want to be a good support system. Um, and we can't ever make someone else change or, or want to do that. But we desperately need that good support system when you're going through those treatments. You need people on your side believing you, helping you get through it. And it's great that your mom was with you because I think you definitely needed, you know, it's nice yeah. to have support. My mom was with me and I made so many good friends at Sierra that I'm still in touch with today. We have a text thread three years later. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so great. And like, I mean, I love my time there. I mean, the treatments were hard, <laughs> but Dr. Fong was amazing. Really just such a kind, kind person and so caring. He was my first experience of a truly caring doctor after those 10 years of dealing with doctors who really didn't care at all about me or my health or helping me find a solution to getting better. Dr. Fong was like, we're going to do it. Yeah. And we really did. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So when you're getting treated now, you're getting treated back East. Yeah, I'm 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 only doing kind of treatments here and there with uh for parasites mainly. Yes, um but I've had some kind of bouts with COVID that kind of stirred some things up again. Uh but yeah, I've been getting, I'm being treated back east uh with parasite doctor. Oh nice. Yeah. So what do you like to do every day now? What do I like to do every day now? Uh, I take my dog out a lot. I go for walks um and hikes and connect with friends. I think just like doing the things that you take for granted, just living, just, just living, just, you know, and I love, I mean, I love coaching. I love my coaching sessions uh, with clients too, and just helping other people. But I think just being able to have your life back again, being able to do things and not have to worry as much about, Oh, is, am I going to be affected by this or Will I be able to do that? And I can finally start planning ahead again now and planning for trips and things like that, that I really couldn't do before. So do you I'm miss so California? Grateful. Of course I miss. Yes, I do. I miss the weather. It's cold. Yeah, here. It's, what's the, yeah it's cold here today in Reno. <laughs> it's cold. I miss California a lot. I miss my friends. I do. And that was my, it was a huge part of my world, but you know, we move on. We find other things that continue to bring us joy and we keep, you know, paving our path forward. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Do you have any kids? I don't have any kids. No. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. It was great yeah. having you. Thank you. And have a great day. Yeah, you too. And I'll send you the Pope. Okay. Okay.